Happy Friday, Junior. It is Thursday and we were almost done with the work in school week and we've been enjoying the sunny days that we've had just not quite in the cards for today's forecast. The clouds, they have started to filter in and they're going to continue to thicken for us as we go throughout the day because we still have that storm on track for the later half of our Thursday. So we don't have any rainfall here at the halfway point of the day and still enjoying some of that sun that's trying to sneak into downtown, but the rainfall that will soon be taking over. Now our temperatures, we haven't seen these here in a couple of days and even much of the month in March, we should have a little more of a green like map. It's the month of green, the madness, St. Patrick's Day being tomorrow. So we finally have that as far as our current temperatures today as those are into the mid to upper 40s and they will continue to warm through the back half of the day as we have a warm front not only bringing some rain but the mild temperatures that are going to be into the 50s. When I look at those temperatures this afternoon, we're going to have those peaking around our peak heat time frame 3, 4, 5 o'clock and we're going to find those readings to be into the mid 50s for us. So we will hold those temperatures there even through much of the overnight. They don't drop until tomorrow morning and it's after sunrise that a cold front slides through. So the 50s, you're going to see further east. You're going to hold on to them the longest, but then we'll transition to the 40s and then the 30s are knocking on the door at 9 a.m. So all of these temperatures are just going to slide further east, and that means that we are going to be finding a lot of our temperatures tomorrow to be in the upper 30s, right around 40 degrees. So that means that when you head out the door to start your St. Patrick's Day celebrations, you really need to plan for temperatures that will be in the upper 30s rather than the lower 50s because this system you can see has a lot to it. We're tracking the rain portion of this. This is what's going to be rolling in for us. The snow side of this thankfully is not on tap for us. We will have some cold air providing some snow off of the lakes, but nothing as far as the snowy conditions that we have been picking up on the last two Fridays. So this this time we are on the warm side. Now those rain chances for us, though this line tries to jump as we go into the afternoon, you will find it's into the evening that it becomes a little more scattered and widespread rainfall in the forecast. It'll actually be steady overnight. And that's what we will wake up to on Friday. But as we go through the day on Friday, you can see that line starts to drop for us. So I wouldn't even be surprised if it's earlier than 2 p.m. that we see this line kind of bulge back down and we actually have a drier forecast towards the later half of the morning. Let's actually time it out here with the hour by hour forecast. Already showing the cloudy skies that we have with the breaks of sun also to go with it. But the clouds will just continue to thicken because around dinner time or shortly thereafter, the rainfall will move in. You'll see it isn't really a lot of smaller storm or showers that are bundled up there. It's larger bundles that we have covering a little bit more, but it'll be broken at times as far as that rain. It's during the overnight. It becomes a little more widespread and steady, and at times it could be a little bit heavy right before the morning commute on Friday, but the morning rainfall will hold off. Here we are at 8 a.m. And then those conditions are going to turn cold because the cold front that's going to sweep in and it's going to push the rain out for us that late morning time frame. That's also when we saw those temperatures dropping there on that map. But also you can see some blue here. That means some lake effect snow showers are going to be possible. I think many of us will have a dry Friday overall, but just with the cooler air in place, a couple of flurries in the air are going to be possible for your Friday and into your Saturday. So our temperatures really making a swing and playing here with mild temperatures for today and early tomorrow, falling then into those 30s. So just keep an eye with the WTO Wall 11 weather app of those hourly temperatures, but then also the conditions that lead us up into the weekend as we have a taste of winter still to come. The app, it is free to download on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. So by having the app ready to go on your devices for tomorrow, you can be out and about in downtown Toledo having fun for St. Patrick's Day and you have all the weather data you need because I know you're going to be needing some weather data with those falling temperatures and starting out with that rainfall. That's just what we have here in our St. Patrick's Day forecast. That morning rainfall going to be likely. It'll be cooler later than that 50 degree mark. So like I said, though the day starts in the 50s when you're having green eggs and ham for breakfast, it's going to feel a lot cooler through the day. Another thing to keep in mind, it's going to be breezy. That cold front not only brings in cold air, but it kicks on the fan as well. So though temperatures by the afternoon are going to be into the 30s, you're going to find that it feels a lot chillier than that. So we'll have that chilly rain that wraps up just ahead of noon. Thank you.
but you can see those temperatures fall throughout the day. So if you're going to be out Friday evening, plan on temperatures to be slipping through the 30s and feeling a lot cooler with that northwest wind to be a part of the equation here. But for St. Patrick's Day, let's talk about maybe some of those averages. Let's kind of expand on this a little bit. Average temperatures dating back from 1874, combining all the data up through last year, that high and low coming together of all of our St. Patrick's Day, the average temperature is 36 degrees. Now on a warmer note though, 77 is the warmest St. Patrick's Day we've had. It sounds quite nice considering the forecast that is breaking down for tomorrow. It actually though isn't very long ago that we topped out at 77. It was back in 20, or, yeah, 2012. So we are going to be looking at that to be about 11 years ago. Another coldest one, it was a low temperature that was recorded below zero. So that's our coldest temperature that we've recorded for St. Patrick's Day. And it actually goes well back to the turn of the century, early, very early 1900s. And as far as the snowiest, it was back in 1973 where we recorded four inches of snowfall. I anticipated this number to be a little bit higher, but still picking up four inches of snow in the month of March. Well, it's happened and it's happened on St. Patrick's Day. Now, as far as our final piece of tidbit of data, you can find our wettest St. Patrick's Day was just under an inch as far as the rainfall back in 1980. So our data really stretching here for quite a ways and you can see even the measurements that we've taken. You can see we've experienced some some extremes on the 17th. Now, as far as the shenanigans here in the forecast, about 48% of our St. Patrick's days have gone without rainfall. So though it seems like 50 50, at least it looks like we do have some dry St. Patty's days considering we're talking rain for tomorrow. But how about snow? We've actually seen well 64% of our St. Patty's days go by without any snowfall. So that means of course, March a little volatile, volatile. Well, you can have a little bit of anything in the forecast. So that's what we have setting up there. Now, temperatures, highs. Though we're starting in the 50s, we're actually going to have a lot of our temperatures into the 30s for tomorrow while we're out and about. And that's actually where we find most of our temperatures to be in the 30s on St. Patrick's Day and those morning lows into the 20s. So we're actually not going to be really close to those averages as far as where we should be for highs or lows. And as far as the rain, we can check that box, but thankfully we are not checking the snow box, but we will on Saturday. We're going to have a few flurries in the forecast temperatures are going to be in the mid 30s. That cold air is going to ride open the ride over those wide open Great Lakes, bringing us some snow showers. I don't anticipate much as far as accumulations or impacts, but just don't be surprised if you have some flurries that are going to be in the air as you're out and about having some fun on the weekend. Now Sunday though, we have sun in the forecast. It'll have a little more of that mild feeling. Temperatures are going to be warming up into the upper 30s. I wouldn't be surprised if we can exceed that for just a little bit more, but we are going to find that you do have that rain showers late tonight, early tomorrow morning, and then the flurries for Saturday. Finally, then we turn this forecast over to some drier weather for us. That's going to be here for the brand new work and school week as finally those temperatures do start to return. We have those 50s here and then 61 by Friday, but it looks like just like the pattern that we've been in, Friday could be a little bit wet, eyeing some rainfall, and then, well, just like we expect, a drop in temperatures then come the weekend. So that'll be our next system that we're keeping an eye on after we go through a mainly quiet and mild work week ahead.